Now uh, we will continue with the last speaker of the first session on Wednesday, and this is Jonathan Mboyo Ezole. So uh, 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 I guess I need Nathan's help, and uh, Mboyo, can you please set up your slides? And uh, I'll give a, a regular Blackboard talk. Oh, okay. All right. So maybe I should just announce, uh, right? Uh, Mboya is from Northeastern University and he'll talk about meta representation and the geography of Lie subalgebras, an extension of Katz Bafa method. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Mboya, please go ahead. Uh, hi, everybody. So it, it's a pleasure to talk at uh, a string math. Uh, I happen to be from Africa. So I guess for me, this is a home talk. Um, the topic of uh, my presentation is about charge. Uh, charge very much as uh, we use them um, uh, in, in uh, string compactification. And we usually we compute them with uh, different techniques. And so I'm going to introduce a, a method that generalize what we usually do. So here uh, I will be uh, giving a, a whiteboard talk. So this is about, um, sorry, one second. Okay, there we go. So this is gonna be about, um, one second, let me set it up. Okay. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So I had a problem setting up the the pen, but it's working now. So this is going to be about matter representation and uh, the the cat technique. So the first question to ask is, why do we care about matter representation? And when you do a string compactification, typically uh, you have a geometry and out of the geometry, you try to derive the physics. And when you try to derive the physics, there are a few elements that you care about. So the first one is to identify what is uh, your gauge group. The second one, is to know what uh, are actually the matter that you see in uh, your theory. And using uh, different techniques, uh, there are different approach to this. Uh, so historically, uh, you had uh, the heterotic string compactification. And in the heterotic string compactification, finding the group and the matter representation was relatively straightforward. Uh, then you had compactification using F theory that are very geometrical. In F theory, you can determine the gauge uh, group by looking at the type of fiber you get. So for example, if you have a fiber like this, that has singular fibers of an elliptic vibration, uh, this is an affine thinking diagram of type A3. And so this would be related to an SU3 uh, gauge theory. So uh, as you consider more singular fibers in higher co-dimension, you can have some enhancement. So for example, this fiber, uh, so this is an SU4, sorry. This fiber can enhance to a fiber of type A4. And this will correspond to a matter in the adjunct representation. So how do I know uh, that so the decomposition of the adjunct will give me matter in the fundamental representation? So how do I know uh, that uh, uh, this is the case? That's when the cat vafa techniques uh, kick in. So Katz and Vafa were trying to find um, a method to detect matter without using duality to uh, the heterotic string. So the, the way they deal with it, if you compare the, the picture I drew before, is to basically assume that uh, 
uh, when your fiber enhance, they correspond to different Lie algebra, and you try to understand the decomposition of the adjoint. So that means you have uh, some Lie algebra G that is a subalgebra of another Lie algebra H, and you try to see what happens uh, when you decompose the adjoint of H. So typically, you will have uh, the adjoint of H will give you the adjoint of G plus some uh, representation that you call your matter representation. So in this decomposition, there are a few things you have to be careful about. So number one, uh, the multiplicity that you see in the katz rafa decomposition, they don't necessarily correspond to the physical multiplicity, multiplicity. So what it means is that the representation should really be uh, think in terms of the reduced representation. So you basically see what are the reducible components, and then you will use other techniques to know their multiplicity. So for example, you can use, if you are in 6D, uh, uh, you can use um, uh, the condition that you get from anomaly consolation to find what the multiplicity are. And there are different uh, counting techniques that works. So, so now in the original Katzwafa technique, G and H are very specific. So they typically look at a ADE type of Dinkin uh, diagram. And they also are uh, working with the condition that typically the rank of uh, H is exactly the same as the rank of G plus one. So you basically have rank one enhancement. So under this condition, they also observe, observe the following thing. The representation R that you get will be a collection of uh, irreducible representation. And this irreducible representation are typically, uh, uh, they, are, they are typically um, rep uh, representation that are called minuscule or quasi minuscule representation. And so this type of representation are very rare. And they, they are very special in physics because they show up all over the place. But there is a little bit of a problem with this. Uh, a lot of interesting geometry that you would like to consider uh, in physics are not of the type of ADE. Uh, clearly you can have exceptional group like G2 and F4. And when that is the case, uh, it's not so clear uh, what you have to do. Uh, so there is an interesting work by uh, uh, Morrison, Well, uh, sorry, one second. So there is an interesting work by uh, Dave Morrison and Antonin Agrassi, in which they basically look uh, at uh, the geometry of f theory uh, to try to understand uh, what happens in all the other cases. And so what they had to do was uh, to take into account the fact that uh, in the geometry you have some fibers that are exchanged with each other and uh, they use it to try to determine uh, the representation you have. But it's a little bit like you need to introduce a recipe for every uh, new case. So what I would like to propose today is a technique that is a direct generalization of a cat and is extremely natural and it helps actually understand uh, matter representation in physics without uh, necessarily attaching it to a theory or another theory. It's really something that has to do with the structure of Lie algebra themselves. So in order to explain this, I first need uh, to, to review some property about uh, representation uh, of uh, uh, Lie algebra and also uh, subalgebra of, of simple Lie algebra. So the first notion is the notion of an embedding. Yeah, so I just dropped my tablet before this talk. And so as you can see, it does not write as good as it's supposed to, uh, to do. Um, so when you talk about uh, two algebra, G and H, 
uh, the idea that G is a, a subalgebra of H is very ambiguous because you can have multiple version of uh, G uh, that actually isomorphic to each other, but do not end up giving you the same uh, representation when you decompose the adjoint. So, so this situation is visible even in very simple case. So let me take uh, the case of uh, uh, A2. So in A2, the only Lie algebra you can put inside is A1. And already at this level, you can see that there are two possibilities. So if you think of the Lie algebra A2 as the parent uh, uh, Lie algebra, it has two uh, possible subalgebra that are both of the type A1. However, if you do uh, the decomposition of the adjoint of A2 along the first one, what you will get is uh, the following decomposition. So you have the adjoint, which is the eight of A2, will be written as a three plus the representation five. And in the other one, you will have the adjoint would be written as uh, the adjoint of A1 plus twice the fundamental representation plus one. And so, so the one that people are familiar with in physics is this one. And the one that people would be very surprised to see anywhere is this one. So, so now uh, clearly uh, the one that is on the right is the one seen in the Katvafa technique. And so one should ask the question, what is the difference between these two embeddings? So when you talk about embeddings of uh, Lie algebra, there is one uh, um, number that characterizes the embeddings in a way, it's called the Dinkin index of the, of the embedding. So in this case, what we notice is the one that works has Dinkin index one, and the one that does not work has Dinkin uh, index four. And so here you already see that uh, the physics seems to uh, make a choice that when you have different option, it seems to select the one that has Dinkin index one. And so one can then ask uh, the following question. Is this an accident or is this something that is true in uh, a more general setting. So together with uh, my, my collaborator, Monica Kang. So Monica Kang was a PhD student at Harvard Physics and now uh, she started this year as her first uh, year of postdoc uh, at Caltech. So, so we did a lot of study of uh, enhancement of singular fibers in uh, F-theory. Uh, some of this research is also in collaboration with uh, Xing Dong Yao, who is in the audience, uh, Patrick Jefferson, and uh, uh, Shu Hang Xiao, who, who gave a talk uh, on Monday. And so we have a lot of data to see uh, what are the representations selected by the geometry. And out of this, we're making the following conjecture. Um, the one that are selected by physics in uh, uh, the generic case will basically have a uh, Dinkin index. One, and so this is the conjecture. And so the rest of the talk, I'm gonna to try to convince you that this is actually true. So the first case to consider is just the case of uh, uh, Katzwafa. So in the case of Katzwafa, uh, what we have is uh, we have 10 possible geometries uh, that uh, they consider, and they are basically all of the type uh, ADE. So I'm gonna review uh, uh, them very quickly. Uh, so, in, in the cat vapa technique, you have uh, the enhancements of type AN minus one goes to AN that give you fundamental matter. Uh, you have the enhancement of type AN minus one 
goes to Dn. Uh, you have uh, A5 goes to E6. You have D5 goes to E6. E6 goes to E7. D6 goes to E7. A6 goes to A7, which I write here because it would be a, 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 a 2E7, it would be a special case we will review, and E7 goes to E8. So all these are the representation that everybody is familiar with in string theory. And not a surprise, they all have a Dinkin index one when you compute the matter representation that you get. Uh, however, uh, you have to be careful of some boundary cases that are usually not uh, considered carefully. Uh, hello, Isola? Yes? Okay, uh, sorry, I just, your voice disappeared for a while. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, the boundary cases are going to be the geometry that we studied uh, just before. So uh, when you have A1 goes to uh, uh, A2, you have a special case like this, but you also should be careful with A1 plus A1 goes to A3. And so you can think of it as a case where, for example, you have two SU2 that enhance into an SU4. So in that case, you will also have a situation where there are multiple embeddings and you have to be careful to select uh, the one uh, that uh, is given uh, by uh, the physics. And so I'm gonna give you uh, a representation of A3 uh, and it's all this uh, subalgebra that will make the choice very clear. So if you consider the Lie algebra A3, it has three subalgebra of all dimension one, B2, A2, and A1 plus A1. So these are the maximal ones. Uh, so now uh, let's be careful about the Dinkin index that they have. So I will put the Dinkin index as a, uh, uh, as a power for the Lie algebra. So for example, here I will write B2 one, which means that B2 has Dinkin index one. A2 has Dinkin index one as well. And the A1 plus A1 has actually Dinkin index two and two. So basically when uh, you have a direct sum, you can give a Dinkin index for each component. Uh, so then uh, you go one dimension lower, you get a A1 that has Dinkin index 10. Uh, here you have another one of uh, co-dimension one uh, that is A1 plus A1, the same Lie algebra is here, but it has Dinkin index one, and it's a subalgebra of B2. So this is a, a very special. Then you have another A1 of Dinkin index one, that is a subalgebra of these two. And then finally, you have an A1 of Dinkin index two, that is a subalgebra of these two. And the last one, is a cell algebra of A1, four. So as you can see, uh, there are like uh, all kinds of things uh, uh, here that are available, but those that have Dinkin index one are those that I'm gonna circle in red. And there are only four of them. So it happens that if you look at the decomposition of the two A1 plus A1 that you see, the one of Dinkin uh, index one is the one that gives you uh, the matter representation that you expect to see in string theory, which is the bifundamental representation. The one that has Dinkin index two will actually give you uh, a representation that would be of type uh, three times three. Uh, in the same way, if you look at the other one that I circled in red, the matter representation that they give you will basically correspond to what you would expect to see or when, for example, you have a, a physical model that has a Lie algebra of type B2 that enhance 
into an A3 and so on. So, so basically by just looking at this graph, uh, you have the list of all the representation that you can get when a theory enhanced to A3 and there is nothing else. So, so the, the idea here is that this type of graph, we call them uh, geography of list of algebra. And so this is based on the work uh, of Dinkin who did it uh, even before young mill theory were uh, a thing. And interesting enough, if you look uh, in the original paper of Dinkin, you actually see that even uh, the very notion of uh, decomposition in the adjoint is present. So he look at uh, cases where he has uh, an enhancement, let's say of H from G. And there is a leftover representation here and he call it uh, the characteristic representation. And in its classification of what are the possible uh, Lie algebra that you can get uh, that are embedding in another Lie algebra, this notion plays an important role. In the physics community, R here will correspond to what we will call the matter representation. But once again, with that, all the precision on the multiplicity of the irreducible component. So um, what we did with Monica was basically to continue Dinkin's work by trying to not only compute R for all the possible cases, but also see how one case uh, embed into another. So I'm gonna give you um, another example that um, is very uh, interesting in F theory. And after that, I will formalize some of the math that helps to do the classification. So here, I will consider the case of uh, the geometry of G2. So if you look at uh, the G2 Lie algebra, it has the following uh, graph associated to him in terms of uh, embedding. So first of all, you can have uh, an A1 plus A1 that enhance into G2, uh, but this one has thinking index 3, 1. So in other words, you won't see this uh, enhancement in string theory. Then you have one that is a SU2, an SU3, sorry, that has index one. And this one, the, the matter representation that you get is actually something that we see in a theory. Then you have a three possible way to get uh, A1. So you have an A1 that has Dinkin index three, an A1 that has Dinkin index four, an A1 that has Dinkin index one, and one that has Dinkin index 28. And the one that has Dinkin index 28 is very special because it's actually a maximal embedding, meaning you cannot put uh, a Lie algebra of dimension two, of rank two in between G2 and this one. And the way they are embedded into each other is as follows. So here again, uh, you can identify those that uh, according to our algorithm, will play a role in physics. So this is these two enhancement and the matter representation that they produce can be explicitly obtained using um, F theory. And so basically you can do this for all the Lie algebra. It becomes a little bit involved uh, when the Lie algebra is big. Um, however, it's doable. So for example, if you think of the Lie algebra E6, so E6, uh, is a huge Lie algebra. It has a uh, hundred of subalgebras that you can think of. However, those that have Dinkin index one are only 30 of them. And they can be organized in a very beautiful graph. And uh, understanding each one of them uh, is basically interesting because the conjecture tells you that uh, all the representation that you can get uh, that gives you matter coming from enhancement of E6 would be one of these three. So, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, uh, the mathematic uh, that is used uh, to uh, understand uh, the structure of uh, this graph. And 
the good news is that this is extremely simple uh, representation theory. So, so the first notion uh, is to not think of uh, Lie algebra as a subset of each other, but really think about the map. And this is a, a notion that is very uh, general in mathematics, in category theory, uh, in algebraic geometry. We really like to think about math uh, in terms of uh, maps rather than just uh, objects. So here, the, the most important notion is to have an embedding. And so what it means is that one Lie algebra uh, can be mapped into the other in such a way that the map is injective. And uh, the image uh, of the Lie algebra G in the Lie algebra H will actually be isomorphic to each other. Uh, however, it's possible that the same abstract Lie algebra G can be embedded in many different ways in H. And the Dinkin index is one way to keep track of it. So number two, you need to have a notion of equivalence. And equivalence of uh, Lie subalgebra is extremely tricky because depending on the definition that you choose, uh, you, you, you can have a, a very different results. So, so typically, uh, there is a relation that is just called equivalence. And so what it means is that two sub-algebra uh, are equivalent to each other. If you can find an inner automorphism of the parent Lie algebra that map one into the other. So I, I would say this is the more refined notion of equivalence, but however, that's not the one that is relevant uh, to understand matter representation. Uh, you have another notion of equivalence which is called linear equivalence. And what it tells you is that if you have a representation of the parent Lie algebra, uh, the two uh, subalgebra that are linearly equivalent to each other should give you induced representation that are basically related by a linear uh, inner automorphism. And so this notion here is the one that is relevant for matter representation because it tells you even if the two algebra are not the same, uh, they give you the same representation. So, so now um, uh, that you have these two notions, you can uh, introduce different concepts that tells you how hard it is to identify the matter representation. So number one, uh, the simplest situation is the following, a situation in which G is unique up to a, a linear equivalence. So in this case, it means that there is no ambiguity in saying what is the matter representation associated to G. And so when this is the case, we call this a singleton subalgebra. So singleton subalgebra are really the most friendly you can think of. Uh, so once you try to identify the geography of a given Lie algebra, the technique is really first to try to identify the singleton subalgebra because they basically give you no room for mistake. There is no choice. You only have one possible matter representation. After the singleton subalgebra, you can have a situation where you have multiple G that are isomorphic to each other but are not linearly or equivalent uh, uh, to each other. However, by miracle, they can still uh, uh, give you the same uh, representation. So when this is the case, we call it Katzwafa singletons. Uh, because for the purpose of matter representation, they are basically the same. And, and here it doesn't matter what um, the Dinkin index is, but in most cases that we know of, they will always have Dinkin index. One is very rare to find a singleton subalgebra or a Katzwafa uh, singleton subalgebra that does not have Dinkin index one. There are a few cases in E8, and we have a classification of that. <laughs> When you are outside of this case, that's when the conjecture start playing a role because you basically, this is the jungle. You have a lot of uh, uh, different representation to choose from. 
And here the conjecture tells you that if you focus off uh, the one of Dinkin index one, you basically find those that uh, give you the right representation. So I'm gonna give you an example from F-Fury where this resolves like a, a situation that is very annoying for geometers. Uh, so you have um, the, the Lie algebra G2, F4, that are uh, exceptional Lie algebra that are not simply laced. And it was always very annoying to try to understand the matter representation. So uh, in uh, uh, the paper of uh, uh, Morrison um, and uh, Antonella Grassi, so what they do is uh, they try to identify one uh, specific enhancement that gives you the matter that you would expect. But the matter that they get is the correct matter. However, the enhancement does not correspond to what you see uh, geometrically. So what I mean by that is that um, you will, for example, think of uh, enhancement where um, F4 goes to E6, and they actually get uh, the matter representation from this. But if you look at the geometry of the F4 fiber, Um, th that basically is um, a symmetrization uh, of uh, the E6. So I'm going to draw a few di uh, diagrams. So this is G2 with the free node uh, uh, identified. And so if you look at G2 fiber, for example, the matter enhancement that you will get is of the following type, where this free node uh, collides to form a fiber with multiplicity free. So this, you can think of it as a fiber that is basically a reduction of an E6 fiber. And so for F4, uh, you have a, a geometry that is a little bit more involved. So you have something that looks like an E6 with the nodes that are identified and the multiplicity goes like one, two, three, like this. And after you uh, collide them at a, a singularity in higher co-dimension, uh, what you get is a fiber like this. So according to the algorithm of uh, Grassi Morrison, you will get your representation from E6. But when you look at the fiber you get, this fiber is not a contracted E6. It's definitely a E7 or a E8. So it means that uh, the proper way to find the matter representation of F4 would be to find it as coming from E7 and E8. And you can uh, very carefully study uh, the geometry, the geography of uh, E6, E7, E8, see all the possibility of having F4 embedded in them. And you will see that those of uh, Dinkin index one uh, give you the correct geometry. Uh, so, so now uh, there are some uh, exceptional situations in which the conjecture does not work. And typically, uh, these are not generic uh, configuration. So there is a paper by uh, uh, Wati Taylor in which uh, he, he find representation that are exotic and that are coming from a, a higher co-dimensional singularities over what is already a uh, singular varieties. And in this case, you end up having tensor product of the fundamental representation of SU2, and these uh, do not have uh, Dinkin index one. Uh, so in other words, uh, the conjecture will work only in uh, the more generic configuration. When your configuration starts having, uh, for example, brain that wraps singular uh, divisors, you can actually have representation that will not satisfy um, uh, the conjecture of having a Dinkin index one. Uh, so uh, since uh, this is a string map in Africa, uh, there is one particularity that is really funny uh, that I'm just gonna uh, tell you before uh, 
uh, to close the case. So if you look at uh, the geography of uh, E6, and uh, you only look at those uh, that have uh, index one, the graph basically looks like the map of Africa, and uh, the Lie algebra A1 uh, would be uh, in what is Cape Town, where uh, our host actually uh, live, and Durban would correspond to uh, A1 cross A1. So we have a beautiful, uh, the, the, the northwest point of uh, the Africa map would be uh, E6, and you will end up with uh, uh, different, all the different geometry in E6 that correspond to uh, the key point of the map of Africa. So we have a map like this in our paper that will come out sometime next week. So I look forward um, uh, for, for more uh, uh, discussion on this. So I would like also to say that uh, when uh, the index is one, in every single case, we could actually map the representation obtained with a specific geometry of an elliptic vibration. And so that's pretty remarkable because you have to think that uh, uh, the number of representation you get and the number of subalgebra you get are really huge. Uh, so for example, if you look at the case of E6 that I was talking about, you actually have 118 different uh, semi-simple Lie algebra in E6. However, so you can think that each one of these 118 will give you a representation and you might think maybe they are all physical. However, those that satisfy the condition of having Dinkin index one are only 30 out of the 118. So the conjecture is really helping you to, to fine tune uh, what is possible uh, in terms of matter representation. And out of this 3D, for every single case uh, that corresponds to uh, an enhancement that you can see in f theory, you could actually see that uh, the representation you get from those that have uh, Dinkin index one are always the one expecting in f theory. And uh, originally we thought that uh, something that will actually play a big role a condition like if uh, your subalgebra is a S subalgebra or R subalgebra. So these are notions that uh, are used in uh, the Kane theory of the classification of subalgebra, but all these things didn't really play a role. Uh, you can have S subalgebra that gives you matter representation that you observe in F theory, and this was not something useful. Uh, you can also think that maybe the only one that will show up are those obtained by removing nodes from a, Dinkin, from a, a given Dinkin diagram, and that was also not the case. So the fact that uh, you have this conjecture is extremely powerful in reducing the type of model that you expect to see uh, in uh, the theory. So I'm gonna stop here. Okay, uh, thank you, Jonathan. And uh, let's applaud. Now I'll mute you. Mute you. Yeah, Ask Kumrun, uh, who has raised the hand. Kumrun. I have a question. Do you have a deep insight about what is the physics of uh, index, uh, being index one being the condition to get matter representation? Well, that's actually the, the key problem that we, we have because we could see that uh, this is definitely uh, what helps you identify the correct physical representation. But when you try to find the reason why that is the case, you really don't see any given reason. So I'm thinking there must be uh, something that geometrically is very, very deep to have uh, this number to play such an important role, but physically we could not identify what it was. We tried to find if uh, in other part of physics such uh, Lie algebra, subalgebra of index one play a particular role and we couldn't see a single example where they actually were even considered special. Huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, well, maybe I should comment on that. Uh, you know this program that uh, also with Clavers and Taylor we uh, we stumbled over, uh, which is the studying about higher and higher charges of U1 gauge fields in F theory. Those yes. are.
exactly this non you would call that non-generic examples but they are there because you're specially tuning singularities of the meta curves and that you know can give you other representation that are outside this classification that you are dealing with so anyway yeah. just a comment so, yeah so so that's actually uh, an important comment because the idea is that if you start with one that is so special that it does not have a Dinkin index one, the moment you perturb it a little bit, it becomes one of the generic case, you see. So, so the idea is that the conjecture is for the generic configuration. So it means if you define a model with a, a given set of parameters, uh, your parameter are basically the generic parameters. And, uh, in um, algebraic geometry, generic is very specific. So it means you are not imposing additional constraint. But uh, in the model that uh, you mentioned, there are a lot of constraints that are required to have this uh, exotic matter representation, which means they are non-generic. And so the, uh, the Dinkin index could be uh, 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 anything. However, you know, when one is asking a physics question, what can, for example, F theory produce for you by dealing with, you know, most general singular structure that is allowed, right? Those are not examples that are excluded. Yeah, they may be measure zero compared to so many others, but nevertheless, those are allowed consistent in F yeah, they, they are allowed, but they don't represent even 1% of the possibility. So what I mean is that uh, all the cases that are not of uh, Dinkin index one were actually obtained very recently. All the historical models, the models that you see when you do super conformal theories, all these models, they have Dinkin index one. Right. But uh, anyway, yeah, I think we can continue that later. Uh, any other questions or comments at this point? No. So uh, let's thank uh, Jonathan and Voyo again for this nice talk. Let me unmute you all. Okay. Concludes the first session uh, on Wednesday, and so I will now give uh, the mic back to Jeff if there are any further comments. Thank you.